time I, I saw a little free library was on a campus tour with, with my, uh, my oldest daughter at LMU. And we walked through the campus and saw them, and then uh, subsequently my other daughter saw them. I said, oh, we want to build one. So we built one at the house and, and got connected to the, the company yep. and in a sense of partner with the company and now have, uh, I think we installed 70 of them this year across, across the portfolio. Uh, and, and plan to install one a year for the next five years until we get you know a, a number that's comfortable for the size of the neighborhood. So, and it you know it encourages them to not only get out into the neighborhood right. to meet their neighbors, uh, but to exchange the books, but also to start that that process of reading right. early. So it's a great connection for us as well to be able to supply you know get the books and information about United through reading into the little free like into the little free libraries yeah. so that then they they can say oh wait they have an app wait what uh, so we can continue this reading routine even when the spouse is away so for us it's a great way to share our information yeah so so it's interesting for me when I was reading about United for reading I think the thing that stood out is as a father of five five children four daughters and, and my son as I mentioned um, and I remember distinctly reading with my oldest daughter, who's now uh, 27, and reading her. You know, we had a goal to read five books a night, mm -hmm. so we read five books a night. And she was an early reader and, and did really well in school. And I think a lot of that is obviously attributed to that opportunity to do that. And thinking about my father's deployments and my father-in-law's deployments, and and really the the opportunity for United to reading to. to to make that connection for mm -hmm. those deployed military families. Can you talk about that a little bit, about how United Through Reading operates and, and makes those uh, opportunities possible for families? I love to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're so passionate about what we do, as I know you are as well. Um, so United Through Reading is really simple. We provide the opportunity for a service member to be video recorded, or a veteran, to be video recorded reading a book, and then we get the video and the book sent home to the child. And that help happens in a number of different ways. Uh, we, we deploy on ships, for example. We ask for volunteers before a ship deploys. The Carl Vincent just came home yesterday. They've been deployed for months. So they had a num because that's a carrier, they had a number of volunteer sailors who raised their hand and said, on my off time, I will run this program. And they actually will set up a recording studio with a camera, and they have a library of books, and they will, the sailors will sign up, you know, and there's a sign-up sheet, and uh, you might be stuck in, you know, who knows where this recording place is going to be on that ship, but they have the opportunity to do that, and they can do it as many times as they want. And then we get that video sent home to the kiddos, and we also ship the books home so that the kids have the real books that mom or dad held while they were on that ship. Or a Coast Guard cutter, for example. We're on a lot of the, the Coast Guard ships. Um, we're on Army bases. You know, We're an Army far family, as are you. Uh, so we're on those Army bases. We're in the libraries and armies around the world. So there is so kind of those, those different kinds of opportunities that we have to uh, run, run our program. We also have a mobile story station in San Diego that's been to a number of your properties. I think it's been to um, Camp Pendleton uh, and also Navy Region Southwest to the uh, Liberty Housing areas. And it's just a beautiful big van that's all tricked out inside. You step inside and there's a big comfy chair like this <laughs> and books like this. Uh, and we've got someone who's recording and you pick a book and you sit here and you read to your child uh, and then you get to leave that behind. So obviously you're at home when you're doing this, but you leave it behind because you never know when that next deployment's going to be. Uh, we work with the Yellow Ribbon events because our Reserve and our National Guard, they never know when they're going to leave. Uh, they could leave at a moment's notice. So we work at those events to make sure that they have an opportunity to be recorded. And then last but not least for sure um, is our app. So we have an app that you can download on any of one of your devices. Uh, we have ebooks that you can download or you can pick this up and with your app uh, record yourself reading this book. Again, we will send this book home to your child for free. You just fill out a little form. Uh, and UTR will take care of that. So we want to get books in the home, uh, and we want an opportunity for our servicemen and women to be able to read to their children as much as possible. We want them to be reading ready. That's great. I, it, it's 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 <laughs> such an inspiration to see an organization like UTR make that connection for families and for the children. And I think you know what a great opportunity for for the families to stay connected. Can you talk a little bit about that? About what what's the the, the the impact on the family that's home, uh, especially for the caregiver that's not 
that's constantly in charge that, of, the, of the household. Yeah, right? That's a big job. <laughs> um, so it, it, we, we impact all three corners of this, of this triangle school, stool. Uh, we obviously started out because of the children. We wanted to make the ch children feel safe and secure. We wanted them to feel connected to their parent when the parent did come home because there's, you see so many pictures dad's been gone for six months and the child doesn't want to have anything to do with dad because the child hasn't seen daddy for six months and, da and that's it's a big scary person and I don't know who this is. So we really wanted to make sure that that connection uh, remained while dad or mom was gone and in fact it, this does help because if you are watching your dad read green eggs and ham every night just like he did when he was at home, when dad walk, comes home it's, it's like he, he's been there and we have proof over proof over proof that that's, that's the way that happens. If you've been using United Through Reading, that connection remains for the child. The service member is feeling good because the spouse at home is feeling supported. I had an um, Air Force spouse, a, a um, gentleman, a dad, who said to me, his wife was deployed and he said, I call it united through taking a shower, united <laughs> through fixing dinner, united through doing the laundry because I put my little boy down with his blanket in front of the TV and I say, mommy's gonna read to you. And then he said, and then I run and I fix dinner. Uh, and so he said, then when I talk to my wife, I say, honey, thanks for watching Jacob this afternoon. And so she, because she's deployed, feels like she's still part of the family and she had some way to help out. She had some way to support that spouse at home. That spouse at home felt like, you know, she was doing something to help him. So that conversation was much different than it would have been if he'd had a horrible day. Uh, you know, the dishwasher broke and you know, he's, he's sick and whatever. But the conversation was, honey, thank you for taking care of Jacob while I did the dishes. So it, it really helps all three parts of, of the family uh, in terms of morale and uh, staying connected. It's, very, it's really simple. It's not rocket science what we do. Right. Yeah, you know, it's, really, <laughs> it's really simple. <laughs> but uh, it has a profound effect on our families. Yeah, I think the constancy and the consistency of being able to, to be there you know, each night, like we mm -hmm. talked about with routines, I think, you know, it, it's chaotic, and you know, I was uh, one of five in a military family with my my father deployed, and and uh, to have to see the way you know my mother had to, to wrangle all five of us to get things done, uh, having him being able to read to us, you know, you know, would have been would have been uh, a treat. You know? Yes, things you don't miss when you didn't you didn't well, have you don't know about it. Right? Looking at now, you can really see the impact, uh, and you know, the yeoman's work that that mothers did 30 plus years ago when they didn't have have uh, UTR or other organizations that right, can help. Right. So uh, your own experience with the military and, and what you've seen in the last uh, last uh, 15 years with UTR, can you kind of share uh, the impact that you've seen? Uh, sure. Uh, my husband's retired Army. Uh, uh, he was a reservist, so we didn't have the deployments like many families, uh, but uh, we certainly had those training sessions when he would be gone for weeks at a time, and we didn't know about United Through Reading at the time. Uh, even though we're 32 years old, we were really Navy-centric for a very long time in San Diego. So that would have been wonderful for us to have had that as well. I, I agree 100%. I think where it really had the, the greatest impact on me uh, and our family is our son. Our son is uh, in the Army Reserves. He's active duty for four years. He's um, deployed to Afghanistan and Iraq uh, several times. And when he deployed the first time, he was uh, uh, mobilized and had 72 hours to, to leave for the invasion of Iraq. And he was the uh, uh, commander of a transportation company at, at Camp Pendleton. And so 72 hours he had to get these troops from four different states, because they're all reservists, into Camp Pendleton, get their equipment ready to ship, you know, the, the wills and the testament, the, you know, the last will and testament and that powers of attorney and all those things that you have to do before you deploy. They had to do it in 72 hours. We still didn't know about United Through Reading, but he had an 18-month-old son. His wife is an educator. I'm an educator. And I said to her, you know, you should video record Corey reading some books before he leaves. And she said, that's a great idea. And I said, yes, because Corey reads to Ethan every night. Mm -hmm. She said, that's a great idea. So Corey came home one night before he was leaving and she said, sit down, you're going to read these books. And he said, are you nuts? I don't have time to read. <laughs> I, I don't have time to do that. I've got to find my equipment. I've got to. She said, sit down and read. So he did. He read five books. Um, and uh, Ethan watched that video every day at least once, sometimes two or three times a day, 
for 14 months because Corey didn't come home for 14 months. He didn't have any leave in the middle. Right. So when he came home, Ethan was over two and a half years old. Midnight, San Diego Airport. Corey was coming down the escalator and Ethan went running, screaming, daddy, 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 at two and a half years old. He recognized his daddy because his daddy had been reading to him every single day for 14 months. Daddy hadn't been gone at all in Ethan's eyes, you know? Yeah, that's incredible. And so that's when I saw the power of this and what it does because, and, and, and why it's so important and, and why I have such a passion for it because we saw it firsthand. And when I got home that night at two in the morning, Ethan grabs his dad's hand, takes him right into his room and says, read daddy, read and hands him a book. That's wonderful. Yeah. I was deployed uh, in peacetime in just two months and I miss, missed my daughter's first birthday, my <gasps> oldest daughter, but came home to that exact experience where she didn't, she didn't want to approach mm -hmm. me, she didn't want to come. It had only been two months and so, uh, you know, the last 20 years of, you know, record number of deployments and redeployments, uh, you know, I, millions of children right, have experienced a parent deployed in many multiple deployments right, and so right. the impact of that I think uh, cannot be overstated and so um, the benefit I think of UTR uh, as an organization not only helps um, national defense in, in, the, in the moment right because I think the servicemen and women that are deployed know that, that they're connecting to their child but also uh, the ability to stay in, knowing that this service exists, knowing that UTR is there to help con keep connecting them through future deployments. Uh, exactly, and so I, I think your point is really well taken, that those um, servicemen and women who are deployed, just like they know their families being taken care of because they're living in your, your housing, in Liberty Housing, uh, they know that their family's being taken care of because they're being able to use United through reading, and that keeps them mission focused. You know, whenever you talk to a, a senior military leader, they want their uh, their soldiers and their sailors to be mission focused. Well, they can't be if they're worried about their families. But if you can provide them a safe place to live, and we can provide them a safe way to, and, a, and a great way, and a, a way to get books in the home to stay connected, then we're doing something to help those troops stay mission ready. That's great. And and so what's interesting too is the you know, that it's not just providing the books, it's not just providing the opportunity to, to read, but really the whole program uh, where we're encouraging the kids to read aloud with the parent and yes. to read aloud. Yes. And so can you talk a little bit about the impact of that on learning and kind of how that helps with development with children reading aloud versus just you're talking reading? To, you're talking to the teacher in me. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be sorry you asked that question. <laughs> um, reading aloud is, is, I mean, just reading with your child just in general is so important because there's there's tremendous amount of research that says that the uh, reading aloud to a child is the most important thing you can do to ensure academic success in school. There's other research that says uh, a third of all children who reach kindergarten have never been read aloud to. Now that's horrifying. Horrifying, I mean unbelievable for you and I because we grew up with books in our home, uh, but that tells you how many families are not growing up with books in their home and they're not reading to their children. So you read aloud to a, a child, they're hearing, they're hearing the words, they're connecting the words with a thought, they're hear, connecting the words with a printed page, they're connecting the words with a picture. You stop and you say, does that remind you of our dog Coco? And then you have a little conversation about that. And in fact, with United Through Reading, we encourage our servicemen and women to do the same thing. So you may be on a destroyer halfway around the country, uh, uh, the world, and you're reading a book and you'll stop and say, oh, isn't this silly? Does mommy do this at home? Now you're not gonna get an answer from your child because you're recording it, but you are engaging in that conversation that you would have just as if he or she were tucked right in here with you and you're reading the book. And so when you see the reaction of the children at home, they actually answer and say, yeah, that is silly, daddy. That's, that is what mommy does. And so that kind of conversation, it's all vocabulary, vocabulary growth, repeating the words aloud, associating the sound, the words, the page, the pictures, the letters. Um, it's critical to the academic success, absolutely critical. There's also research that says the more books we get into the home, the more books in a home, the better academic success chances are for that child. So that's why we're so emphatic that it's not just a recording, but that we get these books into that home. And that's why your little free library, I think, is going to be so important because that's doing the exact same thing.
Yeah, we're really excited to partner with you on that. I think the, the Little uh, Liberty uh, Libraries will be a great opportunity for families to, to connect with each other mm -hmm. in the neighborhood, but mm -hmm. also to, to get new books uh, and exchange books they've read. And you know, we've seen good success with the turnover in those libraries where people, as their children grow, they outgrow certain books, those books go in the library and the next level of books come out of the library. And that constant exchange also creates a common language among the kids in the neighborhood. Yep. Of, oh, have you read this book yet? Up, oh, it's in the library. And so we've seen that just in the library that I have in, fr in front of my house, where every day that the neighborhood's turned over, and now there's a new new group of young kids in the neighborhood that come by and and look at the books, and and we see that the exchange. I think uh, every month or two, it's a whole new set of books in the library that we haven't supplied. They've been supplied right. by the neighbors, and so it's really neat to see. That connection, and I think that starts with with UTR's uh, offer to to kind of seed those libraries with some, with, uh, with uh, books, but also to see the children then take advantage of that, bring them into their home, read them, and then talk about them with their neighbors. Exactly. You know, the different books. Exactly. Yeah. I wanted to point out one thing that we often are asked about, and that is, you know, we, my husband has FaceTime now, so we FaceTime, and we don't need you know we don't need a video recording, or we we uh, you know we do this or we do that, and the the ships are getting Wi-Fi now, and so what we say to that is one: Have you ever FaceTimed with a two-year-old? <laughs> and how how successful was that? Uh, especially if it's in the middle of the night, is your spouse going to get that two-year-old up to read uh, or to talk? Um, and so what we say about this getting this recording done, however you get the recording done, is that it's on demand. You have it when the child needs it. You have it when your, your little girl is missing daddy. You have it when your little boy has just had a temper tantrum. You have it when the twins have just awakened from a nap and they're cranky as all heck. You know, <laughs> you can, you have mommy or daddy on demand when you need it as opposed to the FaceTime, which we're very, we're excited about all the opportunities to have that live communication that we didn't have when my husband was in Vietnam, you know. Uh, so that's wonderful, but for children and reading, that really doesn't fit the bill. Um, and that doesn't uh, help with that connection nearly as much as getting that recording where you can keep it and watch it over and over again. I, that's a great point. I think one of the things that, you know, because we also have a program, the Take the Challenge Now program, which yep. we're, we're launching in the spring, that's a 10-day screen-free challenge. and. And part of it is just to really evaluate the media types that you let into the home. And, and I think, you know, so often now I have a grandson now, and so it's, it's, it's an easy thing to see my, my daughter try to find an easy, uh, quick watch this video yes. to distract me while yes. I get dinner We've all ready. Been there. And so if that video could be of, of her husband, uh, reading a book or yeah, you how much better right or me, grandpa yeah, I'd yep. certainly be willing to do that <laughs> but I think that that's a huge you know thing for, for families to think about is what types of media it's not necessarily that all media is bad but the type so talk about the evolution because obviously 32 years ago uh, there weren't uh, they didn't have the technology we have today so big I gotta start with that. <laughs> tapes remember those big cassette tapes VHS tapes <laughs> those, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, big, yeah the VHS yeah. yes that's what they were yeah. uh, and so that's in the day when we would actually do the pre uh, before deployment so we would go down to the the docks and the piers in San Diego before the ships would leave over a, a month period of time and we'd set up outside on the on the dock and they'd come out and read and then we would leave them with that big VHS tape so that's how we started for sure uh, and then we uh, went to DVDs and uh, and then suddenly DVD players were disappearing. What? <laughs> no, that can't That's be. Right. Because we had the, the regular size DVDs and then we had the little miniatures and those were really easy to send those things home right. um, with a book in an envelope. Uh, and, and then we went to the, the cards, you know, the little, the little cards that you stick in um, the side of a laptop. Uh, and now we have the app. Um, so yes, it's uh, keeping up with technology is, <laughs> is a challenge. Please don't don't mess with anything else for a while. Just let us stay where we are. <clears throat> well, I, I think that in that app technology really makes it portable. Uh, you know, the, the VHS was it was a far leap from a live person, but but from VHS to app is just right. it really makes it again portable in the car. You know when they're traveling. Right. Uh, you know, e even with that in the car on a PCS move, uh, <laughs> to be able to hand it from the back exactly seat across while the country. We're driving. Okay, yeah. just watch Dad because he can't yeah. watch you. Yeah, that's right. um, and, yeah, and so I think that um, as as you said, the 
the take the challenge. Uh, we're, we're very interested in that. We talked about it yesterday. Our team did, and as you say, to evaluate what actually is going on in terms of screen time in the home, because there may be a lot more than you think, and uh, what can you do without it. But yet, this is good screen time. This right. is good screen time because it's uh, it's it's connecting you with your your loved one, and it's doing something that's important, which is reading. Yeah, so the, the, the book that set, set me down that path was Assassination Generation by uh, Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman, who does a lot of speaking with the military. And, uh, and really him and uh, Christine Polson together was, is, uh, helped us with the book. She was one of the authors on that book, uh, has done a lot of research and started to take the challenge now um, 20 years ago. And so really we saw what a great marriage between take the challenge uh, and, and monitoring screen time and what's brought into the home mm -hmm. with physical books mm -hmm. and having the, the little library. So they all kind of tie together uh, to get to get our, our kids focusing on, on the things that are going to move them forward and yep. help them in ways to socially connect and, and better understand uh, their environment without being drawn into to media that we might not approve of or, or might not be helping them make the connections they right. need to make. No, very, very clever. That's a very clever uh, tying all that in together. Well done. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. Credit goes to our team. <laughs> okay. Credit goes to the team. <laughs> Always, right? Yeah. So, well, great. Well, what else would you like to share about uh, United Through Reading in, in, in the, the organization? Uh, gosh, uh, again, we, we think that we do our best work when we can partner with like-minded people. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can spread, the, it's, it's so important for us to spread the word because we're only reaching about 33% of our military population that have children. Only 3%. Uh, there's so much more that we can do. We need to keep, keep spreading the word. We are in 200 locations around the world. Uh, we have great marketing, we have great social media, but we truly believe that it's through our partners like you all that we can you know, spread that net even further. And you're going to help us do that because in those books we're gonna have information about United Through Reading so that you can download that app and read the book that you just picked up from the, from the library. So um, we're excited about that and we believe that we can only be bigger and better when we can partner with folks like you who uh, have the heart of our military families in your heart. So uh, thank you so much for allowing us to be able to work with you. Well, great. Well, thank you for that. So I think that it's exciting uh, to me to think about that connection, right? Because uh, we're going to have these libraries and we're expanding them every year. And so every year to think about another family that gets to make that connection yeah. for the next deployment. And, you know, 60 to 70 percent of our families uh, you know, have children under the age of three, and so we have a very uh, tight window to, to impact them. And you know, with mostly Marine and Navy families, we do have Army as well. Uh, the deployment cycles are not slowing down, no. uh, despite promises. So we want to make sure that we're getting an opportunity for them to connect. And a, a lot of it is just getting the information out there. So exactly. I think uh, having physical locations at, at each uh, neighborhood where they can go pick up a book, but also learn about United Through Reading, and then instantly download the app, record the book. It's just, it's exciting to think about the long-term impact of, of the partnerships. So. I agree, I, I agree 100%. <laughs> great, well thank you, this has been great. I've enjoyed getting to know a little bit more about United Through Reading. And thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you and your team soon. Yeah, sounds right. good, thank right. you, Sal. You're welcome.